Hey guys, I'm Sybin and welcome back to more Magic the Gathering lore. So it's done, Battle for Zendikar is officially out and let me tell you guys, I'm loving it. I'm having a lot of fun playing with this set so far. Everything from the flavor to the cards themselves is awesome. That being said, there's still an ongoing storyline in Battle for Zendikar that we need to address. In my last video on this topic, we saw Gideon Jora and Jace Balaron return to Zendikar only to find their last strand of civilization wiped out. They eventually met up with survivors of that attack and forged a camp atop a giant floating hedron. Gideon still thinks he needs to go back to Seagate, the largest city on Zendikar, and search this ruined capital for signs of the lost merfolk Jora N. He believes that she holds the information vital to defeating the Eldrazi, and needs to go back to find her regardless of how unlikely it may be. Nisa at this time is running around controlling an army of elementals. She has truly bonded with Zendikar and now shares a deep connection with the plane itself. Zendikar has given her the power she needs to defeat the Eldrazi, and now Nisa and her elemental friend Ashaya set their eyes on their toughest opponent yet, the Titan itself. Ulamog. And that's where we continue our story, as we await for the silent cry. We find Nisa and her favorite elemental, Ashaya, traveling through the deep jungles of Zendikar. Their mission? Still to find and destroy Ulamog. Yet this doesn't distract them from their overall objective, to save as much Zendikari life from the corruption of the Eldrazi as possible. As they make their way towards the Titan, they stop and kill every lesser Eldrazi they see. Nisa, through her connection with the land, starts to view things differently. She starts to lose her perception of valued life, beginning to see how each living and non-living thing is connected and important to Zendikar. She's willing to risk her life for a grove of trees, just as she would lay it on the line for a group of elves. As she and her elemental friend are traveling, they hear a distress signal coming from a tribe of humans who have lived in these jungles for centuries. They believe this tribe must be under attack by two to three Eldrazi and immediately rush to aid them. As they arrive, Nisa found that there were in fact three Eldrazi present. Two rather large monstrosities slowly approaching the hamlet of tree houses where dozens of humans have gathered to mount a defense, and another much smaller Eldrazi making its way towards a grove of trees. Nisa had to quickly make up her mind, which would she and Ashaya help first? She made the decision to help the people first, not because they were humans, but because they were being attacked by two Eldrazi, and two were more destructive than one. Very sensible. These Eldrazi wouldn't be easy to defeat, they were large and more balanced than their typical monster, but they had to do it as fast as possible if they'd hoped to save the trees as well. Nisa and Ashaya charged, using their powers to knock the Eldrazi off their path towards the people. Nisa used her nature magic to pull on the people's treehouse, bending the mighty structure down to the earth. She helped the people escape and find safety behind a rock, which she then covered in a thick blanket of tough roots. With the people safe, the Eldrazi began to make their move on Nisa and Ashaya instead. One of the great twins lumbered towards Nisa, who was still bending the great tree. The Eldrazi don't think as we do, so it probably didn't realize that a bent tree would spring back with great force once released. Nisa was counting on that logic. As it came within range, Nisa let fly the tree and added her own force behind it. As it connected with the bony faceplate of the Eldrazi, it shattered and splintered the Eldrazi's head. With one dead, the pair looked to stop the remaining two. The elemental, Ashaya, didn't realize that the second Eldrazi had slithered its way towards it and wrapped one of its tentacles around its root-like leg. With a powerful tug, the elemental came crashing down. Ashaya was in a very vulnerable position and Nisa could sense it. Nisa directed all of her power towards her fallen friend, using every weapon the land had to offer. With roots and thorns as sharp as blades, Nisa dug into the Eldrazi's fleshy skin ripping and pulling until Ashaya managed to break free. Once back in a position of power, the elemental wasted no time and bludgeoned the Eldrazi until it laid motionless. With these two defeated, Nisa immediately turned her attention to the third which was making its way to the tree line. 
But before she could move, she and her elemental became surrounded, not by Eldrazi, but by the people they had just rescued. They were all so grateful for her service that they swarmed to thank her. Nisa gradually moved through the crowd, telling them all that there was still an Eldrazi left, but they just didn't seem to care for the trees as she did. Once free, Nisa and Ashaya followed the path of chalky destruction to the heart of the forest, but they were too late. Nothing but ash was left. This was a true moment of failure for Nisa Ravain. She felt like she betrayed Zendikar itself and was unworthy of its power. After some sobbing, Nisa pulled herself together and once again, the pair made their way to Ulamog to stop this madness once and for all. As long as they continued to find more and more spawn, Nisa believed they were on the right track. She believed the Titan was probably in Balajed, her once beloved home and home to many elves on Zendikar. To get there, they would have to cross the sea, which means they had to go to Seagate. Nisa had visited Seagate once before, all she remembered was how big and powerful a place like that felt. Little did she know that this great place had fallen just as easily as those hamlets would have if she didn't stop it. But her thoughts couldn't continue. She was struck with a great pain. A pain that tore at her side more fiercely than she had ever known before. It must have been an Eldrazi. She looked down expecting to find a sharp, corrupted blade piercing her, but there was nothing. A second, more brutal pain passed through her and her elemental. A child was feeling the effects as well. This was not a physical attack. Something was attacking Zendikar itself. It was severing their bond. As the elemental bucked in pain, Nisa passed out. When she awoke, she was alone, truly alone, for the first time since she connected with Zendikar. There was nothing. She dug deep into the ground and her soul to summon Ashaya again. But, of course, there was nothing. The sadness was more painful than the force which separated her to begin with. Zendikar was lost. Lost for good. She wandered around, screaming for Ashaya, hoping that somehow the land would hear her and return her friend. It didn't. In her despair, she became blind to the dangers that screaming could bring, the danger that was all around her. She almost walked right into the backside of an Eldrazi, but she was stopped by a merfolk. The merfolk tried to calm Nisa down, assuring her that everything was fine. She didn't know what was going on with this elf, but knew she had to help her. Together they walked away, but not before being noticed by one of the monsters. Nisa's sadness turned to rage, rage against those who took Zendikar away from her, the Eldrazi. Without a plan or much thinking at all, she continued her march against the monsters who took so much from her. With no other real option, the pair attacked the Eldrazi. Although she had the will to fight, Nisa really didn't possess the skills. She had used swords a lot in her life, but it now felt so heavy and sluggish when compared to the power of Zendikar itself. Her magic was a much more effective weapon than anything she could wield made by mere people. Nisa and the merfolk fought well, but were outmatched. Nisa's sword was knocked out of her hand and the merfolk was pinned by one of the Eldrazi's massive tentacles. They looked as good as dead until two ropes with hooks found their ways into the monster's flesh. They were core, coming to lend them a hand and some rope. With the Eldrazi distracted and preoccupied with the core, Nisa and the merfolk were instructed to climb up the rope to safety. There were more core atop a rock from which the ropes were thrown. As they climbed, another Eldrazi appeared and leaped onto the rocks which housed the other core. They grouped together but they were being slaughtered. Nisa, completely filled with rage, and with sword in hand, climbed over the top and cut through one of the Eldrazi's tentacles. With its balance off, Nisa was able to push the monster from the rock, throwing it to its death. Those who survived on the rock were grateful for the elves help, even the commander of the company, Gideon Jorah. As Jorian was pulled up, Gideon saw her, the reason he was out here to begin with, the secret to ending the Eldrazi once and for all. The merfolk who saved Nisa also had the information which Gideon believed could save them all. Nisa was also shocked to find that this man, Gideon, was a planeswalker like herself. She found him as they were traveling on the road and told him everything. Gideon was of course happy to have another powerful planeswalker by his side, but Nisa wasn't as pleased for her powers were basically gone. She asked Gideon if he felt something earlier that day, 
a pain, something which took his powers away from him as it did her. Gideon had no clue what she was talking about. For all he knew, his powers were still all good and accounted for. This was something that happened to Nisa and Nisa alone. They arrived back at the Floating Hedron camp, where Gideon set to connecting Jace and Jorien. Nisa was left to ponder over her lost friend, Zendikar, Ashaya. Would they ever return to her? And that, guys, is the story so far in the battle for Zendikar. We can see things are starting to really take shape. Big players are starting to get connected. Jorien has been found and will meet up with Jace. Nisa has found the other planeswalkers but has lost her powers over Zendikar. And everything is just starting to be fleshed out when more questions arise. Anyway, let me know what you think about this story so far in the comments below. Why do you think Nisa lost her connection to Zendikar? If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It goes a long way in supporting future content. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.